Hey, good morning guys, what's happening? It's Mig here and I am actually just getting to the studio. I'm, we're here in New Jersey and it's really cold today. And um, just pulled up and we're gonna go inside and get the day started. So um, that's it, just having my Duncan and uh, get my keys out here. Get the day started. I got a few, a few clients coming in that I have to produce. One's actually going to be a voiceover. It's a Hindi voiceover for India. And then I have a hip-hop artist who is uh, coming in for a few hours to do, uh, do some tracks. They grabbed some beats off the website last night, and now they're coming in to do some tracks. So here we are. My sign is on the ground. It keeps falling off the door. i got to get a new sign. But... Let's get in here. All right. Studio, studio, studio. Got to get the lights on. It's like a little bit of a mess here. We had um, we had a gospel session in here the other day, and they were, they were rehearsing. They were actually doing, like, you know, vocal rehearsing and whatnot. So here I am. Hey, good morning, Dream Street, and good morning, Rugrats, and good morning, everybody. Put the lights on in here and get going. My little, my little fancy light panel, my little light box. All right. Everybody's like, what's behind that wooden door? Or they don't even notice it. It's just like, there used to be just wood on here. And then my girl, Jess, she came in. She's like, you got to put something there. So we put this here. And that looks cute and fancy. And she also got me some red pillows and stuff like that. So, all right, so basically, I just come in here to throw my stuff down and turn everything on. Boom, turn on the power center patch bay. Turn everything on over here and get ready for today's session. All right, so have the uh, Mackie big knob over here, the machine, which we're not going to use today. It's just there. It's just there. See all this stuff? It's just there. You don't need... Even though I have this big studio that I worked, you know, obviously 20 years as a producer, I worked really hard to get a studio that I can kind of open up to the public. Um, I didn't have all this stuff for the majority of the time that I was producing and remixing some of these big, big projects. I, all I had was this thing here. It was just this Roland JV-1000, which was like, it's my baby. I've had it since 19, like 93, I think, it, 94. It was $4,000 back then. I had to finance it, but I needed it. It has a drum. It has like an eight track and it has one track dedicated to drums and it has expansion cards and all that stuff. You know, we have like all this great stuff. Like I have these uh, Westlake monitors. These guys are like $4,000 a piece. I rarely ever turn them on. But if you're going to have a studio, you kind of, you know, in this day and age, people walk in, they want to see stuff. They want to see, they, they want to see toys. We walk you around a little bit while everything's loading up. So we have some guitars. I play a little bit of everything. Um, my main thing was keys. Right here is where the drums are supposed to be, but we had a rehearsal. So I put them back here in my other production room. And sometimes one of my other engineers will come in and he'll do sessions when we're really busy. Uh, you know, do another session for me while I'm doing one in my room. Or if I can't get here, I'm doing a project. Sometimes I'm doing um, projects outside of here and running the promo company and doing the stuff for Max Beats and just more like administrative stuff that I'm doing. That's like my little DJ practice center. This guy over here, um, these guys were given to me by Gemini and I haven't used them in a while because I haven't been DJing in a while. I've been so busy with production that, you know, you have to prior prioritize. You have to go out there and try everything. I was doing four to five gigs a week and then I just got so busy with production again that I was like, you know, I kind of have to go with what is really like my main thing. And I'll do a gig once in a while, but um, I really don't, it's, it's just not my thing. It never was my thing. I was thrown into it. I had to do a, um, I was thrown into DJing back in like 2009 after I had remixed Michelle Williams' uh, We Break the Dawn was a big, big summertime dance track after I remixed it. So Sony asked me, they called me and said, would you do us a favor and would you DJ Michelle's album release party? And I said, oh, in my mind, I said, I'm not a DJ. I've never even 
touch the turntable, but I ran out and I bought DJ controller. I bought like the, what is it? The M audio exponent, which I used religiously for like five or six years. And I, it was really great. I really got that thing down pat, but I ended up doing the gig and it was over at Cielo nightclub in Manhattan, which is a big nightclub. And, um, I was completely nervous, but no one knew by the end of the night that I had never done a gig before. So, I mean, I'm really good under pressure like that. My mind just really starts going, going quick when I'm under pressure. I don't shut down like a lot of people do. I actually start digging into like a database in my head and like start filing things and start pulling things out real quick. And I just put on the smiley face and act like I know what I'm doing. A good friend of mine once told me back in the day when I worked for a janitorial company, we would get hired to do jobs that we have never done before. Like um, just crazy, crazy stuff. And um, we cleaned up a suicide site one time. I mean, just insane stuff. I'm like, we've never done this before. He's like, you just act like you know. Don't let them know that you don't know. And that's advice I can give to you um, that you can use for anything in life. Don't worry about what you don't know. You're going to learn it. You're going to learn it right then and there. You're going to learn it on the spot. You're going to learn it by failing. You may not pull it off the first time, but you're going to learn it by failing. And you're going to know next time that you have like a new skill now, a new trade. So anyway, um, I did this DJ gig. And um, it went off really well. I didn't do many after that. I kind of took, kind of chilled. I was happy I got it out of the way. And, um, but several years later, I decided I wanted to give it a go again. I was listening to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of music. And I was around a lot of DJs. I'm like, all I have to do is go out there and just do what I, what I already do well. And that is pick really good songs to play for people. I usually have that. Some people have a natural knack for knowing what's energetic and what's fun. And that, that's me. That's what I like to listen to. So I ended up doing that and got my DJ, DJ gigs everywhere. And I was doing, you know, nightclubs in Atlantic City and casinos, uh, just like all kinds of gigs, uh, clubs throughout the city. I have, I have a radio show that I'm on right now, like every other week. It's the Hollywood Hamilton Remix Top 30 out of New York. It's on uh, KTU and it's actually syndicated in 60 major cities. And um, that, e that information, you can actually see me on the website, along with my friend Gino Caparelli. It's at uh, RemixTop30Countdown.com. I believe that's what the URL is. But um, I'll put that in the, in the video anyway. But so, you know, you act like, you know, you just kind of go along, go with the flow, see what you're good at, see what you're not good at, see what you're comfortable with doing, see what you're not comfortable with doing. Even with this studio. I didn't want this studio. This was presented to me years ago. This space was here. Like, it'd be a great place for you to put your studio. We have this space available. And it was a friend of mine, and he was involved with the uh, company that owns this, this building that the studio's in. I'm like, all right, come take a look at it. I didn't need a studio like this. I had my JV1000, and I had a little rack like this at home. And I was doing my music that way, and I was comfortable. I wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, play with the dog. This is like, you know, before I had kids and, and whatnot. But, um... The studio didn't do anything for like a year. The only clients that came to the studio were ones that I had existing. I, weren't getting, I wasn't getting any outside clients from that point and um, didn't know how to. And uh, I'm going to show you in another video how I ended up getting 60 new clients within the first three months of me trying this, okay? I tried something new. I got 60 new clients within three months and it was easy. It was really easy. I don't, you know, I was like, wow, I can't believe that actually works. So now I have over 400 clients and uh, I don't even have to do what I was doing because now as times progress, the studio has actually built a reputation and people know about me in, in my area and um, they call, they just call. I mean, I get emails and texts and calls all day. So anyway, good morning. And um, that's it. I just kind of wanted to uh, start my day off with you guys and, uh, I am going to get ready for my session. I will talk to you later. Please comment, subscribe if you haven't, and stay tuned. I'm gonna share 20 years of my music industry knowledge, um, advice, and suggestions with you guys. Uh, I'm brutally honest with people. So anything that you want me to talk about, just ask. I've had publishing deals. I've had label deals. I mean, I've done it pretty much all the things that I set out to do almost all the things. I've, I, I actually was able to 
accomplished to some degree. So I have the experience. I can, I can give you advice on your contract negotiations. I can tell you what's a good publishing deal, what's a bad publishing deal. I can explain to you what is the difference between, you know, signing a deal with a label or just doing it yourself. What's better, what's worse. I mean, anything. Production-wise, you name it. I've produced, written, remixed hundreds of projects for so many labels, so many artists. Um, my, credit, my credits are actually listed at maxbeats.com, M-A-X-X-B-E-A-T-S.com. Go over there, check me out, check out my company, take a look around. We even have beats. You can buy beats if you want. If not, it's fine, but stay connected to me because this channel is going to blow up because I'm going to continue to give you guys the information that I have amassed over the last 20 years. All right. Anyway, have a blessed day.